Welcome. It's been a while since my last video, so thanks for your patience. Uh, today we've got a drawing of a rabbit to do, or a bunny. So uh, we'll be using graphite pencils or grey leads to do that with. So today you'll need uh, a large, maybe A3, possibly A4, sheet of just normal cartridge paper, or any kind of drawing paper really, and a variety of different grades of graphite pencils or grey leads, a sharpener and an eraser. And we'll get started soon after the intro. But before we do that, I'd like to show you just a few things, uh, an artwork I've been working on and some of my products from my Zazzle store. So bear with me as I switch the camera around. So here is my latest um, pastel drawing. This one hasn't featured in any videos. I um, wanted to just do this one um, without recording it. But you can see the process if you get onto Instagram. Um, and my Instagram account is Robert Kingdom Art. So I'll just zoom in a bit for you. So this was a um, this was based on a photo that I had taken a while ago of a still life setup um, back when I had a different table in front of the window here. Now I've got the uh, the tea trolley there. Um, but I used to have the, the plate that you can see down there. So there it is um, on a glass topped table and uh, my little vase that I had given to my grandma kingdom uh, maybe 15 years ago or so. And then when she passed away, the vase came back to me. Um, so it's nice to have that memory of her. And I picked some roses from my garden. These ones were um, or are called Fruity Parfuma, which is a fairly new breed of rose and they have a lovely fragrance. And then there's a, um, a glass uh, cherry blossom bonsai plant in the background that's sort of blurred out a bit. Uh, and it, it was quite a challenge to do the rose itself, uh, to avoid it looking very flat and um, or too, I guess, too bold or stark. So, um, but I'm, I'm pleased with the, the end result. And it needed to be sharp and crisp because the photo itself um, had a, a softer background, which helps to create that sort of 3D look. Uh, really happy with how the vase itself turned out and um, it's an Ainsley vase and I, I love that little just strip of gold that's just just here um, so there's the plate in the background on a stand and the sunlight streaming through yeah so there is um, that one and I'll be taking it off to the framers soon once I've had it professionally photographed to make prints of. So if you do happen to want any prints of it, then stay tuned for that. And some exciting stuff. Here I got my very first calendar from my Zazzle store. So Zazzle produced this. Um, so I designed the whole thing. So here is there's my name slash logo or one of them and um, that's my watercolour painting with pen and ink on it of the Cape and Ray lamppost so that's the scene from the Bible College I attended um, Cape and Ray Bible School which is in Carnforth in Lancaster which is in Lancashire in the UK and I'll show you the back of it so I've put all the pictures that are inside the calendar here and there's um, I've numbered them as well so that you can see what the titles are and just a little globe about me there and what I do and I was really really impressed with the quality I wasn't quite sure what to expect um, but it's the it's like a thick card slightly glossy and um, the picture quality is excellent. I couldn't ask for better. 
and then the um, with the calendar, depending on what country you're in, you can select which holidays you want. So we've got Australia Day there, but someone in America could choose American holidays for theirs, or in the UK, some different ones. Um, but the images are all very true to the originals. Uh, so there's Miss Marple's tea rooms. There's my mosaic uh, called the Raspberry Thief based on the William Morris design known as Strawberry Thief. And here's one that you might have seen in previous videos me showing. Um, just a section of it. Old books, so the old man at Collins Street Bookshop. There's the Cape and Ray lamp posts again, but um, I think that was in the winter. With some frost on the ground, so that one's called Lancashire Frost. There is my Nodding Lotus picture, which I changed the colours of on Canva. Some more of a tropical vibe there. And here's my watercolour painting of the Nicholas Gardens in the Dandenongs, which is called With Summer Before Me I Walk On. And the colours are exactly right for the, um, like exactly true of the original artwork. And here is um, the Werribee River, another chalk pastel one. And there's the one that was on the front cover, which is just called Cape and Ray Lamppost. And here is one of my pastel drawings of a magnolia flower called Beauty's Fragrant Glow. Oops. And that's the last one there for December, that is North Yorkshire Mansion, so that's a watercolour with some pen work. Yeah, so that's the calendar. Uh, so really happy with that. So you can, if you want to grab one of them, you can get it on my Sazzle store. You can decide, this is a large size, you can decide to get a smaller size. Um, and sometimes there'll be sales on as well, so you can sort of keep tabs on that getting a bespoke item can be more expensive um, but part of the benefit of getting a bespoke item is that you have something that's you know a limited run rather than something that everyone's got um, but yeah they do have sales and then I got a whole batch of mugs which I'm going to give away as, as some gifts for Christmas um, but here's my Baroque Aquarium pen drawing. So really happy with that. So this is the classic style of mug and it's just got the, the Zazzle label on the bottom. Here is my um, China Doves artwork which was an acrylic painting I did on a huge canvas for church many years ago. And I've used the mirror image function like for, with the tiling. Um, so you can kind of make a pattern on the Zazzle store. There's different tiling options, and one of them is the mirror one. So you can see how it's that's the center point there where it's reflected on the other side as well. Sometimes you get some interesting things, which I'll show you in a moment, that appear. Um, that one used to be called Wedgwood Doves, but for obvious reasons, when I'm starting to sell things, I need to change the name. Um, here is the mosaic again of the Raspberry Thief. Really nice bright colours there. So you can see that it's repeated, or it, it's the mirror image in the middle there. And occasionally there will be a product that you have to ask them to redo. Uh, there are a few mugs that were a little bit pale, but I um, yeah, just asked them if they could reprint those ones for me. And I've been super impressed with the customer service for Zazzle. They're not sponsoring me or anything. Um, but yeah, I'll just say that I'm always really happy with the customer service. They're very happy to replace, redo any products that don't turn out or give you a refund. Really friendly people as well to interact with. 
and they even said they'd expedite the the new mugs free of charge for me so that's cool um this one here so this is the nodding lotus one so there's the original picture tucked away in there but then i've done the the mirror um for the reflection kind of thing and you could probably see oh hang on it looks like there's a monkey up here staring back at me and then there's some other i don't know monkey or creature or it could even be a big sloth or a turtle. There's a couple of eyes, excuse the thumb, and a nose and a, and a mouth. And down the bottom there's you know, a cat or an owl or some, some weird bug. And then if I turn around here, up the top it looks like a badger or a bear or something. And then there's some kind of weird gnome or koala thing down the bottom. So... <laughs> That's kind of cool. I wasn't expecting to see all those when I put them together. But I can imagine kids would have a lot of fun trying to identify all the different animals that appear in there just because of the, the mirror, mirroring that happens there. Um, really happy with this one too. This is the Flying Scotsman. So that was a pen and ink drawing I did many years ago, um, commemorating the Flying Scotsman visit to Australia, so it was actually shipped out to Australia, to Melbourne, for the Austin 88 um, festival. So there were a whole lot of steam engines that got together and they brought across the Flying Scotsman for that and it travelled through Melbourne, uh, through Victoria, and um, that was for Australia's bicentenary. And if you wanted different coloured versions of that, I do have one or two other coloured versions as well. There's a purple one that looks pretty cool. And here is my afternoon peonies painting, just part of it. And I really love the colours on that. Can be a good one for Christmas too. And I do have a bunch of Christmassy things on the Zazzle store, but if you're ordering anything now, you'd probably want to have, choose the fastest shipping method just so that you can make sure you've got I think it's in time for Christmas. And this is probably my favourite one that's turned out so far. This is Falston Farm. This is a pen drawing I did many years ago and I gave it to my grandparents. And um, eventually when they passed away, the drawing came back to me, so I've had it properly scanned. So that's, I think, in Yorkshire. I actually saw that building when I was travelling in the UK. I was just in a coach going along the road and looked out the window and thought, hang on, I know that place. I'd already drawn it. So you can see I've done the mirror image there. I don't think there's any creatures there, but I like that little bit. Yeah, so that's all of my mugs. And just one more thing to show you. This is my um, Baroque Aquarium pen and ink drawing, which was done several months ago just as a mug design for my Zassel store. So you saw it on a mug before. And I had to do the long, narrow format so that it would reach all the way around the mug. And then I got a, an antique frame from an antique store in Yarrow Glen, uh, which is in the Yarrow Valley, um, just on the outskirts of Melbourne. And it just had the glass and the frame. So I touched up the, the frame, fixed a few cracks and repainted it and chose the burgundy or deep red uh, mount board just to give that sort of regal baroque kind of feel and then i took it to the local framers that i use and they did the rest for me which is cool and that one's available for sale 500 dollars australian if anyone's interested so there is that so um after all this let's get back to drawing the rabbit so I'll see you after the intro. <laughs>
start drawing the bunny. I've got my ruler out and I'm going to do a cross grid. So if I measure my page just to check the, the length and the width, I want to get the lines as central as possible. So I'm guessing that will be about 42, 40. 1.5 so that will be about here and then width wise 29.5 so that will be uh, we need um, fourteen point five. No, hang on, fourteen point seven five. I think. Let me just double check that since my brain's a bit slow today. Twenty nine point five. 49, yes, 14.75. Okay, so that will be here. So that's my center point, and I'll do that same measurement up a bit higher. So we had 14.75. Do it down lower as well. And then I can join the dots. And I'm not wanting to press hard at this point. You might not be able to see these lines very well on the video. Um, but just trust me that I'm doing the cross grid there. The darker you go, the harder it's going to be to rub bits out. So you don't want to go too dark there. Now, uh, what was my other measurement? Just to do the line going across. That was... 20.75, I believe. Again, so this is the boring bit, it's measuring things up, but it really does help. Now you don't have to use the cross grid to help you to do your drawing, but I'm finding with all my classes that I'm doing that it does help us to map things out easier. Okay, now I might move up to a slightly darker pencil than that. I've got a B here, a B pencil. So with grey lead pencils, um, the H pencils are hard and they are light. So the harder the pencil, the lighter it will look. And the softer the pencil, the darker it will look. So the B pencils, uh, going from B up to 6, 8, I've even seen 12B, um, those will be your darker ones because they are softer. And you can also get HB, which is halfway between. And there's sometimes you'll see a pencil that's got F on it, and F is for firm. And that's probably the equivalent of an HB pencil. Alright, so I've got my cross grid on. I've got the cross grid on the photo of the rabbit that I'm using as well. And I won't leave the cross grid on the photo of the rabbit all the way along. I can take it off once I've got things worked out, basically. And when you're working, when you've got a photo, 
uh, I'm using one on my screen on the computer. When you've got a photo that you put a cross grid on, it might actually, the, page, the dimensions of the page that it's on, or just the edges of the photo, they might be different lengths and width to um, your paper. So if you just start from the center of the cross grid and work out, same on the photo, then you should be okay. Just be aware that sometimes the paper will be slightly shorter or wider or something than the photo or the other way around. Okay, so I'm looking roughly to see where the bunny's head's going to come out at. These are just initial sketchy loose lines where we're trying to map things out roughly. So I'm looking at the cross grid on the photo and back at the cross grid on my paper to work out roughly where the bunny's head fits in. And it's a given that you're going to have to adjust some of this. As you start to put more bits in, you might realize, oh, that's too big or it's too small. It's the wrong shape on this side or that side. You're going to have to rub things out and don't feel embarrassed if you have to rub things out because it's all just part of the process. And you'll notice that I have to rub bits out too with all my years of experience. It's just what you do. Obviously, with the more experience you do, you can get things down quicker sometimes, but some, not always. Okay, now I've already noticed when I'm looking at the photo that I've come too far out this way. So I need to bring the back of the bunny's head in so that I can bring the back of the bunny in as well. So I'm going to bring it in closer. And we're breaking it up into basic shapes at the moment. So there's this kind of shape here. It's a bit more flat here and then the back of the bunny comes up about here and then we've got this shape that comes around sort of curves around here and then there's some more of it that comes out somewhere over here. So that's starting to sit a bit better with me. Okay. So there's quite a lot of the rabbit's head, the bunny's head in this section here. Now I can loosely pop in one of the ears. It starts over on the left side of the line up here. There's not a lot of it there. And then it comes across like this. And then it comes down. So I've brought it out too far that way. Maybe I've got the head too far out that way as well. We'll see. So I'm going to just try that. And then I'll rub that bit out. And work out if I need to bring the back of the head in a bit. There is some fuzz that sort of comes back a bit like this so I think I'm okay and this ear it's sort of it's what it's got um what's called foreshortening where when things are on an angle they will appear shorter or lower or something um, than they are in real life so I'll just pop that little line in there and I've also got to remember where things are in relation to this line here and it actually needs to come down a bit like that okay but there are also those folds of skin there okay now for the left one it will sort of come up like this 
and I might not get this composition exactly the same. I might not get the rabbit looking perfectly the same as what's in the photo. But at the end of the day, so long as it looks in proportion and it looks like a rabbit, then we're fine. Because we're not trying to simply duplicate the photo. We are using it as the basis for our work and we want to get things in basically the right position, but we're not stressing about it, make, about making it absolutely perfect. Because this is a sketching exercise we're practicing. And there goes the ding on the phone. All right. Now I, I have enlarged the picture from what's on my screen. So I'm, I'm going to just see if I can actually enlarge the picture on my screen as well. That wasn't working. Let's try that. That helps me a bit. Okay. But when you've got, when you're working from something small, you might even be working from an image on your phone, then you're going to have to enlarge it. So things are going to be a bit trickier it's easier if things are exactly the same on your page and on the screen but what I'm doing is enlarging so you sort of got to step back and check whether things are looking okay okay so the bunny's nose is just above the line like this and the head probably comes up just a little bit more like this, I think. I think I put too much down below. Okay, so... And with the eye, it's helpful to have that section there of the grid. To compare it to so there needs to be some space between the line and the bottom of the eye and then look to see how much distance you've got between the eye and the top of the head where the ear starts so i'm pretty happy with that i may still change a few things i think maybe that this ear needs to be changed a bit it's just looking a little bit fat so let me just give that a little bit more attention before I move down to the body. Bring it out like that. And sort of, it comes out a bit wide, but then it's not too fat. So maybe something along those lines. All right, we'll leave that for now. And I'm happy with the chest area, happy with that angle. The challenge then is to work out how far down will the feet go. Now from around here, we've sort of got a bit of a change in the, the fur. Some shadowy area showing me that this is the front of the rabbit here, whereas the, that's more connected to the back. So this will cover over where the arms are. And now, I think down the bottom of the page, I need to leave about that much space. Just looking at the photo and I believe my paper is a similar sort of shape to the photo so I want the <clears throat> excuse me I want the the paws, front paws to end around here and there's just a bit of a gap in the middle thankfully they line up very well with with the cross grid line going down there so something along those lines. It's a challenge with fluffier animals. 
because uh, you can imagine if it had really short fur, it'd be much easier to see where the arms and the legs and, and so on appear. Okay, now that arm just comes out on a bit of an angle like this. And then I think I just need to bring it in a bit more like that. Rub about a bit there. And we will soon rub out the cross grid once we're happy with the composition. So once we've mapped everything out, then we can rub out the bits we don't need anymore. So that arm goes up there. That's a bit of fur. Goes across there. A bit down here. Notice I'm just doing some jagged, sketchy lines there to show the edge of that section. And I'm just going to bring a bit more fur across there. Okay, now I'm going to look at the foot and it pretty much comes to the same point in the grass, but there's a bit of a gap, a bit of space. And the foot is sort of flattened off a bit at the front, or the paw. There's not really any definite little, I don't know if you call them fingers on a rabbit. It's just a little bit of a line there, where the fur is, and then some lines there uh, and then on the other side over here the other back paw the foot is coming out over here but it's a bit higher up and then there's some shadow underneath it like that and if i look at the photo i'll I'm just grabbing my ruler and putting it against my screen. You won't be able to see this bit, but I'll just describe what I'm doing. So I've taken my ruler, put it on the screen, and I've got it vertically. And I can see that now if I put my ruler here, yeah, the foot comes out about there. There's just a little bit of a gap there. And then I'm going to put it back there and check whether the chest comes out as far as the nose. Not quite. So that's another indication to me that things are in the right place at the moment. So the rule, using a ruler to do that kind of thing can be very helpful. I could then measure the paw against the head, back of the head. So the paw. But I'm noticing, assuming that I've got the paw correct, and that's always the challenge, I'm noticing that I actually need to bring the back of the bunny's head in a bit more. And then there's just a bit of white fluff that's there. I could also check that the rabbit's, the bunny's back is in line with the bottom of the eye. And almost, I'll bring that down. I might even bring the bunny's eye up just a little bit more. Refine the shape there. Okay, and I'm going to use the ruler, excuse my arms, just to check it against the front paw. So it should come into about there. I'm going to put that there and yeah, that's pretty good. Maybe I'll just bring that eye back a little bit more, like that. Okay. I'm happy with the space around it. Because there is, in the photo, there's more space up the top of the picture, which I might end up... I might, if I decide that the photo itself needed to be cropped a bit. I could have done that before, to be honest, but I don't mind chopping a bit off the page as well. Um, if I feel that uh, 
I need to not have quite as much space. Or just when you get it framed, you can actually um, get them to use some of that bit under the under the mount board. Okay, but it's probably better to do that before you take it to the framers because they won't always put it in the exact best spot for you necessarily. Okay, now these front paws look a bit straight, so I can just change that up. Once I start to stick in some more blades of grass like I'm doing now, it will help a bit and I'll curve it up a bit on one side. And once I put in some more fur, that will help too. Now I'm just looking to see if I need to adjust anything else. Just going to go back to the edge of the ear, the lower one, compare it to the feet. So it should come to about there. So that's pretty good. I might just actually need to bring it out just slightly, like this. There. I'm happy with that. And now I actually I need to just bring the nose up just slightly. And there's that little line. Now I think I can just rub out those lines. You will no doubt lose a few details as you do that. So you'll need to just connect those sections again. So we don't want to leave the cross grid there. You might, in the end, end up seeing it just slightly, but that's okay. So long as you use dark shading in places and have a good contrast, then it really won't show up much. And in some ways it's kind of cool for people to see all the, or just a vague little hint of all the preparatory work that you did. Some artists even leave those things in particularly when you're doing pen drawings and stuff, you'll notice they've got all the lines going this way and that. I personally like to get rid of as much as I can. But don't stress if you can see things a little bit in the end. All right, so now it's a matter of popping things back, connecting things up. Okay, and I'm going to add in a few more details, but I'm going to go and have a coffee and then I'm going to come back and keep working. So I'll see you soon. Back from the coffee break and it was a good coffee as always. So now I just have a few very small details to add in. I'm just looking for where there are some darker shadows in the fur. And I'll just pop those in to help me when I come to do more of the shading. And there's a bit of a line around here. And then the mouth sort of comes down this way, goes up a bit that way, a bit of a smile. And just adjust this a little bit more. Check that I've got the details in the ear correct. A little bit that goes inside here, and then we've got that <laughs> vein going right up with the sun shining through. Not sure if I'll emphasize the vein too much in the final thing. Sometimes you make some adjustments 
here and there. And then there's a little bit going up here, a line that curves around this way. Okay, so now I've got uh, the basics in and I'm going to find a 6B pencil. You can use an 8B or a 10 or 12B if you happen to have something darker, but 6B should be fine. And I'm going to start by doing the eye. I often like when I'm doing a pencil drawing to start with the darkest part first. And then I can work out how dark or light the rest of it needs to be after that. There's not much of a reflection of light in it. I can just see a tiny little grey dot. It does look like there's a bit of an eyelash or something, an eyebrow hair sort of coming around, but there's also a very tiny little reflection of light, a little dot. So I'm going to make that stand out a bit more for the sake of the artwork. And it's just slightly lighter in one corner as well. The rest of it I'll keep nice and dark. I won't bother about the little hair that's sticking over. Nice big bunny eye. All right, so that's nice and dark now. And I've got that little bit of light reflected there. I may um, push that back a little bit. See how the, the white makes it come, that dot come forward. Pushing it back means you make it slightly duller or darker so that it goes back a bit. But I'll leave that for now and see how I go. Excuse the scratchy noises of my feet on the chair. And I can use my 6B just in this part of the nose. Just around here where I need that good contrasting shadow. There'll be a bit of dark up here. So we're at the fun part of the drawing now. We've mapped everything out. We've refined things. And now we can start shading. Now it's not to say that we won't use the eraser anymore. Even if we're not making mistakes, I might decide to rub out just some of the the smooth lines at the edge so that I can make it look a bit more fuzzy. But we'll get to that shortly. It's kind of dark down in the, the crevice of the where the ears sort of folds at the base. Make sure we leave that nice bit of light reflecting off the edge. And then there's some, there's the darker bits down here as well between the front paws. Down here, we've got some more the really dark shadows. So we're wanting to create really good contrast. So contrast is where you have very dark darks, very light lights, and bits in between. You don't want to have everything very a very similar tone because while close up you can see the details, if you stand back, you won't really be able to see things as well. 
and also if you're wanting to make it look like it's on a sunny day then you want to have those really dark shadows and things otherwise it's um if it's too all too pale you're not going to get that appearance that you get on a really bright sunny day where the shadows are strong and contrast good contrast will also help it to look a bit more 3d but we do want all the, those mid-tones in between as well so that it's not just like black and white but nothing in between because then you lose some of the detail and it would look a bit more like the old school kind of photocopies where it's just either patches of white and patches or patches of black I think that's all I really need the 6B for. Within the rabbit, I can use it a bit more when I do some of the grass after I finish the bunny. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now I'll go back to the B after I've taken a sip of chamomile tea. <clears throat> now you don't necessarily have to do the shading part of this if if your goal was simply to get practice in drawing the basic shapes of a rabbit, then you could stop there. But if you're wanting to do, if your goal is to do a finish, more finished drawing where it's shaded, it's looking more 3D and so on, even something that you might want to put in a frame if it works out well, then you can keep going. But it's good to have in mind what your goal is and it's helpful to just think in little bite-sized pieces. Just plan very small goals rather than thinking, today I want to be the best artist in the world and I want to produce an amazing masterpiece. That's not going to help you to feel good about your work when you finish it off because usually there'll be something that you're not happy with. It's a, much better to have the mindset of okay today i'd like to practice drawing a rabbit and when you put that word practice in then it reminds you if you, as you think about it that um, you are just practicing it's just an exercise to help you improve just like when i do some violin practice it's not a performance no one's assessing me, no one's even listening to it, at least in my house. And there's not the stress of feeling like you've got to get everything perfect. It's just an exercise. And so your goal might be, aside from learning how to draw a rabbit, you could break it down further and say, I want to learn how to shade an animal with fur. I want to practice um, doing texture. I want to practice doing different tones with grey lead. Okay, so as you break it down into those small little achievable goals, then you'll get to the end and go, oh yeah, I've, I've learnt a bit more about how to create different tones. I've been able to make something look like it's got fur. And then you can feel like you've been successful. And you can apply that philosophy to many things in life as well. And also bear in mind that I've had years of practice and I'm still practicing, but I've had years of practice, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, so bear in mind that I've had years of practice and I don't want you to compare your work to mine at the end of the session, if you're drawing along. I want you to compare your work with things that you did a week ago or a month or a year ago, or even further back, so that you're more in competition with yourself. Okay, so you're not in competition with me. You're not in competition with anyone else here. 
It's different if you enter a competition and your decision is, I want to see how I match up with other people and get feedback from the judges. Um, but generally, as an artist, you're not competing with other artists. There is a truth, a reality where, yes, you are in some ways competing with others in the marketplace and so on. But as far as your skills and so on goes, the best or go, the best person to be competing against is yourself. And also, when I say that, I would encourage you to be kind to yourself as you do that. You know, you don't want to be that horrible coach that's just berating the students all the time and so on and telling them, come on, that was horrible, you need to improve, and so on. Be kind to yourself as you're competing with yourself. And be gentle and just keep reminding yourself you're practicing, you're learning new skills. And if you've learnt just one little extra thing, you've picked up a new little drawing habit or something, you've learnt how to do texture on a rabbit, you've learnt how to create tone with grey lead a bit more than you used to be able to, then that's great. Now, you could decide to have a blunt, more blunt grey lead or graphite pencil for this so that you have a softer look. You won't see the individual hairs as much if your pencil's more blunt. Mine is fairly sharp and I'm just happy to work with that. I'm looking also to see, as I'm doing this, where are the little shadows? Where are the bits of light? Where is it? basically just white and if it's white I'm just going to leave the paper blank as it is in that spot because I'm using lines as I draw there's little spaces in between which help to create that appearance of fur sometimes I want wider spaces sometimes I want to go closer together to create more tone so with a graphite or grey lead pencil you can create tone by having more space between your lines but you can also create tone by pressing harder and by using different grades or different softnesses and hardnesses of, of the grey lead pencils. You want to change the direction of your pencil strokes depending on where you are on the rabbit. Sometimes they'll go up and down. Sometimes they'll be on a diagonal, pointing in one direction. Sometimes the diagonal direction will change. And that will also help to create that feeling of form. So form is one of the elements of art and design. And it's connected with shape, but it's also connected with making things look three-dimensional as though they occupy a space. So to curve your lines around or to have them at different directions, you're helping to convey the illusion of form, the illusion of something looking 3D, and you can see how the direction of the surface changes as you move your lines around, as you change the direction of them or their angle. Don't be afraid to start off light and then put in the darker tones on top if need be. It'll just take a bit longer, perhaps, if you go more gentle to start with. But if you've got the time for it, then that's fine. So you can see how the head is starting to take shape, starting to look like a rabbit, especially once you put the eye in and the nose, you know you've definitely got a rabbit happening there. <clears throat> but now it's starting to look like a furry rabbit and it's starting to look more 3D. So 
So remember, keep looking at what you're drawing. Because as you turn away from the object that you're drawing or the person, you will forget bits of information that you've just seen. So you need to keep looking back. There's very few people that have a photographic memory. So we need to keep looking. Observe where the light edges are on things. Where does the tone change a bit? It'll get a bit darker in places and then get a bit lighter. Sometimes if, if the fur is, or the surface, the tones are not, there's not a lot of distinction, you might feel the need to exaggerate some things to so go a bit lighter than you need to and a bit darker than you need to, to help create a bit more interest. Blackbirds are happily singing in the background. I don't know if you can hear them. But we've had a very rainy day today in Melbourne. And um, so we're in the middle of spring. And uh, last night it was absolutely bucketing with rain to the point where it kept me awake for a while. It was so heavy. And then this morning we had more heavy rain. But the garden is looking very happy for all the rain but I think most Melbournians are desperate to have the summery weather come upon us. We did have a 29 degree Celsius day last week which was absolutely lovely but now it's dropped back to the point where we've got the heater back on today and it's a bit, just a bit gloomy. But it's a good, good day to draw fluffy bunnies. Can't help but cheer you up. Okay, now around here, I'm just going to change the direction a little bit. And then bring that line across subtly. Okay, so I think at this point I've shown you enough technique for the shading. So I'm going to, uh, from here on, just concentrate and I shall um, do a time-lapse section for the, the rest of the drawing and then join you once I've finished the bunny and move on to the grass. I'll join you again then, so see you soon.
Well, I've pretty much finished shading in the bunny. But there are some extra bits I need to do now. So I mentioned that I was going to do the grass earlier. And when you've got an object that is white or fairly pale, if you leave the background, it's going to be hard to get the edges looking furry on on a like a, an animal that's that's lighter. So it in this case it's helpful if you do actually shade in the background a bit. In the photo you'll notice that it's more blurry and uh, or towards the top and the grass is sharper at the bottom. So if we start to add in some blades of grass, just with different lines, we don't have to copy every blade of grass. We can just sort of get an effect going that has the illusion of grass just by doing some lines that go sort of in different directions with lighter bits in between, some bits of darker shadow as well. You don't necessarily need to go right to the edges, it's up to you totally. So we do want to have good little pockets of really dark bits to add more contrast here. And I'll just talk about working on the, the background higher up. So we want to have a more soft um, approach for that. You could actually use a paper stump or a paper smudger. Make sure you clean it first. And by the way, like here's a bit of sandpaper, so if you haven't used these before, it's just rolled up paper and you put it on an angle, rub it back and forward as you turn it and that will clean some of the paper off and it will be ready to use. Um, you could use just a bit of tissue or something to smudge it or you don't even need to smudge it, you can just sort of blend gently with the pencil itself. Uh, so I'm going to go to the 2B and where I've got the, the line showing the edge of the fur, now that I've got this area here, I can pretty much rub out that bit there. And then I can do some light shading on the opposite side without actually drawing a line there. And as I do that, I'm making like an invisible line so I'm making the edge but see how that looks softer now there I can put a few little lines going out in between there just to make those bits join up a bit more I don't want to go too dark because if you look at the background it's fairly light around the edge of the, the rabbit in uh, most places. We just want it to be dark enough so that we can see a bit of that edge there. And then as we move out, look, there's a darker patch here that I can pop in. So that's going to also help to create that divide. Okay. 
and little patches of darker bits in the grass. Okay, so I'm just going to clean my paper smudger. You can see some debris, some paper coming off onto it, and how it's getting darker there. Try not to breathe it in. You might want to just test it out on a scrap of paper nearby just to make sure you don't get any dark marks coming off it. And then we just put it on an angle. We don't use the tip like that generally unless we're doing very small bits of shading. They do come in different widths as well. So you can do circular motions if you like, you can just do it back and forward like this. So you play around, experiment, even try it on a different bit of paper first. So we've got that soft edge of the the bunny happening there and remember you can use your eraser as a drawing tool now if it's getting a bit dirty then you can rub it on a on the table or something and clean it a little bit if you put it on the side you can get sharper lines so on so if you feel like you just need some little bits where it's a bit lighter again then just pop those back in some extra details here and there. Okay, so I'm going to do the time lapse thing again and make some comments at the end.
Well, here is the finished bunny picture. I hope you've enjoyed seeing the process and hope that you've learned some things along the way. And I'll just mention a few more things you will have noticed if you were watching the time lapse video carefully towards the end that I did make a few little adjustments. So I brought back in the head a bit more. So rub that back in and adjusted the back a little bit more. And I used an eraser. Down here I used an eraser to do the whiskers. I was going to draw them just with a like dark with dark lines, but then I um, decided now I'll be brave and I'll use the very edge the or the corner of the eraser. Um, you, you'll see how I did it in the in the video, um, so that I actually rub, rubbed back into what was already there, and that's much more true to true to the original photo that it's working from. Um, you know, the rabbit doesn't really have a red eye, <laughs> uh, at least not on my drawing, but that's just the light reflecting off it. And it took quite a while to do the background. You might not want to do particular details in the background. You might want to actually just leave it sort of, you might do it darker, gradually getting lighter towards the top or all the one tone or something. That's really up to you. That's personal choice for that. And I'm just trying to think if there's anything else. It took me a bit longer than I expected because uh, I, after I stood back and looked at the artwork a few times, I kept thinking, no, I need to add in a bit more contrast. So I do have more contrast down in these bits here and even in some parts of the fur. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this and I'd love to see what you produce if you'd like to email me uh, a photo of, of what you've done even if you'd like some feedback along the way and you can email me uh, through my website which is robertkingdomart.com and stick the W's on the front. So do remember to check out my Zazzle store if you haven't already if you want to get a last minute Christmas gift, remember to choose the fastest shipping option um, so that you can make sure you get it in time. Um, here's another mug that I didn't show earlier. This is Cape and Ray Hall where the lamppost picture was that I showed you at the start and I've repeated that one around. Um, and just one more I'll show you. Here is my watercolour painting of the frog. So that one's also got a mirror image kind of thing happening. So there's that one. So check out my Zazzle store and my store name is simply um, Robert Kingdom Art on there. And if you like this video please remember to subscribe to my channel and to click the like button and also feel free to share these videos with other people that you might think would be interested. Um, it's kind of like a free lesson. In the coming year I plan to start doing some lessons, uh, recording lessons that can be downloaded and paid for, uh, like a series of lessons, like a, a mini course and things. So stay tuned for that hopefully fairly soon in the new year and I shall look forward to seeing you next time. All the best. Thank you.